Hey guys, I'm here at the World Table Tennis Championships with the voice of table tennis, Adam Bobber, an absolute legend. I've known you for a long time now, Adam. We're good buddies and yeah. thanks so much for coming on the podcast. Dan, thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here. Awesome. How are we doing, dude? We've just seen Simon Gelsies took out Xuxing right now. It's just madness in this building. I watched the whole match. I mean, I was late. I really wanted to do this podcast, and I'm excited that we're, we're making it happen. Uh, but I could not leave that match. He was down 3-8. He was down 3-8 in one game and made a crazy comeback run. I'm trying to remember what even happened. I felt like he didn't capture that, but then he came back to win, was down 1-2, 2-2, 3-2 by the narrowest of margins, was up in the final game, game six. And then at 3-0, Shushin calls a timeout. It looks like there's no turning back. And then it was point for point till the very end, 11-9 in the sixth. I mean, Simon Gozi did everything from strawberries to chops to backhand rips to inside out forehands. I mean, it was, it was a wild show of table tennis beyond imagination. What I love about it is, when we spoke to you in the past, Adam, your favorite player to watch is Xu Xing. So you just had, you just witnessed probably one of the most craziest matches you've ever seen with two of your favorite craziest players. Natalie and Bruglia, I'm torn. That's <laughs> really like, because Simone is a good friend. He's part of my Andro family. And I love upsets, and I think an even battle, you know, the more non-Chinese and, and even more generally non-Asian players can up their game to match the Asian level and the ultimate Chinese level, um, the better it is for the rivalry, the sport, the viewership, the future of the sport. I mean, the fact that there will no longer be an all-Chinese final means there will be a lot of viewers and a lot of excitement because even Chinese fans have someone to cheer for now where it matters that they're cheering. Absolutely. It's massive because we've been saying at the start of this event, wow, the top half of the draw's got four Chinese players, bottom half's only got one, but the bottom half with the one was Xu Xing, and that was the issue. People are like, oh no, but Xu Xing's so good, he doesn't lose to anyone outside of China. Now the game's changed. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely strong, but in the last few years, I think Zhuang Zhiyuan at the uh, Olympic qualification tournament in yeah. 2016 sort of broke open the uh, pinata in that sense and sort of led the way for others to beat Xu Xing. Lim Jong Hoon, uh, Koki Niwa. True. There yeah, have been yeah, a lot yeah. of players who have. That being said, you've got Ling Gao Yuan and Liang Jing Quin, mm -hmm, who mm -hmm. are less experienced and not quite as stable as Xu Xin has been. Uh, this was the best opportunity that Xu Xin has ever had and ever will have. Yeah. It's possible I'm wrong on that because we don't know two years from now if Xu Xin will play the world championships and if he will be lucky enough to get a draw where he has avoided four other Chinese teammates who are maybe younger, faster, and who knows. But as far as I can imagine right now, this is likely the best shot he ever had at playing a final. He's never played a final before at the World Championships. So as a, as a big fan of Xu Xin and someone who feels a, a close connection, like a brother from another mother, I mean, really, I love Xu Xin. It was heartbreaking for that reason as well. So... I'm going to choose to stick with the excitement right now because I only live once and I don't want to spend too much time being sad because there's a lot to be excited about. And I'm excited about this tournament, Dan. Me, me, me too, yeah. It has really opened up right now. And for the top half of the draw, we're, we're probably most likely going to see Marlong, Fan Zhendong in the semis, or Lin Jin Kun, like you said, and Lin Gao Yan, or maybe an upset. But the bottom half of the draw is really open. Timo, Harimoto. Those are the two that stand out yeah, for, me. for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... and Maybe we're going to see Harry Moto get to the final, the youngest ever finalist. I mean, this is crazy. Yeah, really, anything could happen. And this is always, so while we do have Ma Long and Fan Zhendong, who seem the most unbeatable of any two players in the world right now, um, we've also seen them both get beaten fairly recently. Yes. And all it takes is one really strong performance from a, a Liam Pitchford in theory, who's, I, I believe, no longer in, yes. um, or a Matthias Falk, or... You know, there are a lot of players. Liang Jinquin has beaten almost everybody on the Chinese national team, and same with Lin Gao Yuan. That's why he qualified, you know, to play internationally after the marvelous 12 in 2017. I mean, Tomislav Putsad right now, he came this close to Crazy. beating Lin Gao Yuan in Qatar. Mm -hmm. He's beaten many of the world's best. He's beaten Wang Chuqin recently. Um, there's a lot of possibility he, for upset. He beat Dimitri Jotchov today. Puka. Right. 
Did you see that? Did you miss it? I, I was not able to watch because I was commentating another match, which whenever I'm commentating, it takes most of my focus. I mean, that and catching Pokemon. But, <laughs> no, but you saw the result though, right? Yeah, oh yeah. yeah, yeah I, I had lunch with Putsar uh, oh. a moment ago. It was crazy, again. It doesn't Four surprise three. me though, because right. Dima, you know, I, I don't know if I should say barely, but barely got through uh, Denny Kozul mm -hmm. from Slovenia. And this is a player that most of the world, not near that region, isn't really familiar with yet. But he was incredible, and Dima was challenged. He was pressed. Mm -hmm. It could have mm -hmm. gone to Game 7. It looked like it might. Um, Lin Wenru, uh, my buddy from Taiwan, has been, you know, has beaten Dima twice quite steadily. Mm. So while Dima had an incredible 2017, there hasn't been as much to, to write home about since then. So, yeah, it doesn't surprise me that Putsar was able to knock out Dima. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, there's a lot going on here at this champs. It's exciting. It really is. And, I, I, you know, Dima did play some excellent table tennis, and I still think he's an incredibly strong player. But the rest of the world is really upping their game, and it uh, is exciting. That, 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 that's a good point. What, for what I feel now is, I mean, five years ago, I really felt like, okay, Team will win this match. Freitas will win this. But now it looks a lot more open. And, I mean, it's quite hard to predict now any sort of results. Now, here's another thing. I, I'm a big fan of Tomokazu Harimoto. Um, Joe! You just embodied him. It was like an <laughs> Ouija board was on the table. Bring me Harimoto. Um, here he is in the flesh. Uh, Yale! No, uh, he's awesome. Uh, and he's the nicest guy. And his whole family he's is really cool. He's a nice guy. Really is. And he's very fair. I mean, he's, he's very humble. He just has a lot of fight and a lot of desire to win. And he fights for every point like mad. He has probably the quickest turnaround of taking names. In the sense that if someone beats him, they're on his list. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Marcos Freitas has been checked off that list. He had never beaten him before. I think he was 0-2. And, and he just beat him, I think, 4-0. Yeah, it was. It's strong. Mm. And I, I thought that was going to be a little bit closer as well. Agreed. Again, yeah. How old is Harry Moto now? 16? Is he not yet. He's, not, oh, he's still 15. I think in June he'll turn 16, maybe. God. Need to look up his birthday. But yeah, right yeah. around then. That's incredible. Yeah. And... and what, what's so dangerous about Harimoto is he's still in that sort of age where he just fights like anything. No fear, fearless of his shots. I mean, if he gets to the final, the whole world is going to tune, tune into this match. Yeah, I, you'll be excited to watch that, whether you're from England, the yeah. US, uh, Nigeria, and, Iran. It doesn't matter. That will be exciting for table tennis fans. What will be, re what will be really exciting is you'll be commentating it. Thanks, yeah, <laughs> really be excited. There. That's awesome. Mate, dude, how does that feel? Like, sometimes... Do you ever like, I was, I was asking you once, once off camera, I was like, dude, do you ever like get a feeling like, wow, all these people are going to be tuning in, watching this, listening to me, like, you know, it must be an incredible feeling. It's funny. Uh, I it, mean, is it like sometimes like a different, like outer experience, like, you know, you you know, like you can like, listen later, someone's on their phone. Wow, what a shot. You know, you can hear your own self when someone's on the coach going to the hotel and you hear all the highlight points and you can hear yourself shouting. I mean, it's fun to relive the moments because I was there for it. So sometimes I don't know if you have this experience where you download a song because maybe you had a really nice dance with someone, uh, maybe the girl who will become your wife. And that song holds a really special uh, place in your heart. So yeah, every that, time yeah. you hear it, you're like, oh, I remember that high school dance. Uh, that's sort of what it's like every time I get to hear commentary. It puts right. me right back in the moment. So I, I really enjoy that. In terms of thinking, wow, a lot of people are going to be listening to me. Uh, not, I don't think about it so much. And right. it's, it's weird because it's more just... If I had a live audience that I could see, mm. like stand-up comedy, where they're all right there and you get your feedback immediately, that's different. But I can pretend I'm talking to myself in my bedroom, essentially, while watching, and just watch it for myself, but trying to make it fun for others and share some insight that hopefully is valuable and a fine balance between tactical and technical insight, but also a level of sort of emotional scoring and film composition, if you will, to create the emotional levels for the, the spectators who maybe aren't watching because they really want to develop their receive game, but they're watching for entertainment. Good I mean, point. you know, I grew up in the United States and while people always after watching Michael Jordan play had to go outside and play basketball, maybe not had to, but as a kid who played basketball, that was the first thing you would do. You would lower the basket to six feet so you <laughs> could dunk too, and you would try to do everything you saw. Uh, but a lot of people watching basketball are just like, man, that's crazy. This donut's delicious. And they're not actually going to go play basketball ever, but they're still thoroughly entertained. I imagine, and I think the future of table tennis is going to involve more and more people watching 
that have never played a tournament, that don't know that you can change the rubber on a racket, that are just watching because it's so damn entertaining. So, yeah, I'm excited to be a part of it. And just like any other spectator, I'm excited to spectate it. Uh, for sure. And I, I can see that when you're commentating. So much pas- passion, enthusiasm, you know, you've got such a good rapport with all the players. You know, you, you, you're doing f- fantastic things. Yeah, it's good. Thanks, Dan. It's really, really good. Re- I love it. Oh, I was just going to say I wanted to make a stupid joke, and I know it's way past its time, which makes it even more appealing for me to, to do, because now I know it won't be funny. Um, when you were talking about Harimoto, uh only being 15 and qualifying for the final, I was thinking... Well, I mean, he doesn't have too much else to focus on without a driver's license. I don't know if that joke works internationally because I don't know the age. But, but yeah, no, he's incredibly Funny. driven, no pun intended, to uh, just be the best player he can be. It's, you know, I mean, yeah. we're friends, but I've talked to him in tournaments before where before he speaks more English now than before. But in the beginning, I think it was maybe Australia two years ago, I was sitting with him and Yuto Muramatsu, who was on the world tour more at the time, and we were joking around a little bit, and I said something. And uh, I said something to Tomo, and he was like, oh, 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 and I was like, oh, focus, focus, yes, got it. Because <laughs> he was trying to say, like, I need to watch because I might end up playing this person later. And that's, I mean, doing your homework, 15-year-olds don't love homework in general, but this is uh, why you should pursue what you love, because you'll be excited to do the work, and he definitely is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's got so much passion and energy, and I wonder if that's been a, one of the key contributing factors to how successful he is. I mean, how many 15-year-olds are reaching the level that he's reaching. Not this e- many. <laughs> not, not even the China, China's producing. I mean, to be honest, maybe there are Chinese players who are 15 close to his level, but they're just not playing internationally. Well, that's the question, right? Because also, um, Japan is strong, but it's not China strong, mm. not yet. So when you're Harimoto's <laughs> level and you're 15, um, it's possible that there are players that technically are even better than Harimoto at 15 in China, but technique and tactics and mental strength are completely different. Yeah. And just the exposure, I mean, it's almost like a baby coming out of the womb. Suddenly you're hit with air. And I mean, I don't know how much babies are crying in the womb, but the moment they come out, it's shocking. It's scary. Everything is different, right? <laughs> and they cry this? consistently, right? Mm-mm-mm. No babies come out and you're just like, oh, hey, what's up, everybody? Oh, yeah, it's my umbilical cord, of course. It's been there for months. No one's doing that. It's, they cry consistently because it's shocking. That's how different it is playing international tournaments. And you can see that in almost every young Chinese player. Right. Because you know their level is incredibly high. They've trained with, you know, they, they've had to beat thousands of players who see a dream that's a reality. In, in England and the United States, you really have to believe that you can make a career. You don't have people that are national heroes um, that make it clear that this is a dream job to pursue. Mm-hmm. So, um, in China, when they hit the air of international tournaments, there's a, there's a cry factor. And it's not to say that they're immature, but simply less experienced with different styles of play. And Hadimoto has that leg up mm-hmm. on other 15-year-olds that might be quite strong in China that are behind closed doors at the moment and still developing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, it's a really good point. <laughs> You're like, that's just such graphic imagery. I'm just thinking about having a baby now. I wasn't ready until that conversation you had. Now, thank you, Tomokazu Harimoto and uh, Adam for your description. Uh, exactly. So, uh, Adam, you, you commentate. You've done voiceovers in your time. You remember you told me before you've been an actor. You've done so many things. Can you show me something? Yeah, I used to be the guy on the street corner that would wave the sign to be like, new homes over here. Look at me, right? I used to do that. That was, uh, I think that was my first job. Wow. Yeah, headphones. People would always wear headphones. Um, and I would, I would play Michael Jackson music and dance on the I corner. I you were awesome at that. Well, the funny thing is, it's sort of the same way I feel about every job I have, including commentating table tennis. The, the engagement factor, there has to be a personal connection. <gasps> oh, my God. Please do not cut that. Please keep that in. This is what I have to drink so much water to hydrate my throat that air sometimes. So I'm not cutting that out. Good. That's Don't. staying in. I was going to say excuse me, but I'm not anymore. <laughs> Ten, that's an 11-0. No mercy point. No excuse me. It's a hard oh, cho. Except, except that's fair enough. Mm-mm. His cho is fair enough. My burp was straight up rude. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, that job. When I did that job, now they have people that spin them like crazy and spin them on their backs. And that's cool, but they never make eye contact with the people in cars driving by. 
they, they don't actually engage with people. Interesting. So to, to toot my own horn for a minute as a sign holder guy, I felt that it was important to connect with people in cars and to connect with people walking by and smile because you don't really make an impact if they don't sense that you care that they're there. Mm, mm, you know what I mean? Mm, mm, mm. And yeah. it, it's the same in performing. It's the same in stand-up comedy. I mean, acting on film is different, but it's not different when, like right now, if I wasn't looking at you while we were talking. <laughs> but yeah, in terms of, uh, I don't know, in terms of like reaching people, there, there needs to be, you know, communication is about receiving as well, right? If I say something that's not offensive to me, but you're offended, it was offensive mm. by your standards. And that's important. It's how it's received. And that doesn't mean I should always apologize and I can't say anything and I have to live in this completely PC world all the time. But, but it is important to check in with how things are landing, right? Like if a tree falls in the forest and nobody's there to hear it, does it make a sound? Um, that's deep, man. Well, but it's, it's the, the it's question so that's deep. been there. If you like philosophy, it's been around I, for forever. I've and, seen it. Yeah. Does it make a sound, do you think? Well, so it depends how you define sound. And that might be a very Peterson-like answer, but yeah. in the sense that for me, you're sure it makes a sound. There's just nobody to receive it, but right? Maybe, the sound is there. Maybe. I mean, if you're not looking at this sign, does it exist? Yep. How, how have you created this personality? It's incredible. Like, do you ever get days where like, you're like, Oof. Sure. All the time. Yeah? Yeah, I get sad. I get depressed. I get uh, angry. I get, uh, I'm a complainer sometimes. I've got high standards. Um, I'm trying not to be a complainer because I think uh, Randy Pausch, who was a, a motivational speaker who did some incredible, uh, the last lecture series, um, said, don't complain, just work harder. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's amazing. Wow. Like, that's a great idea. That'd probably be a much better answer than complaining. Mm. So, you know, I don't need to go into details about anything recent um, because... Well, like, like when you played me in the one set showdown. Well, I should, <laughs> right, I, I should, for example, I should work harder or, or just enjoy the fact that, you know, you outplayed me. Um, Let's just not go there. Yeah, we don't have to. Right, I mean, rematch, rematch, rematch. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have one. We'll definitely have one. I've got nothing to lose, right? Except if I behave even more poorly and complain more. But, uh, you were great. It was I fantastic. toned myself down. Dude, that was going either way, man. It yeah, was, I mean, any of us was going to win that match. It was three sets. Anyone's going to win it. Someone, uh, you're you're a diplomatic, nice guy. You're a very nice guy. You outplayed me. Uh, right. But yeah, so in terms of having fun, I mean, you know, my dad used to say, um, what is it? You can't choose the cards you're dealt, just how you play your hand. Actually, that might not have been my dad. That might have been someone famous. <laughs> but... But uh, things like that, right? You do the best with what you've got. Uh, you can't worry about what you can't change. So one thing you can change, so it seems anyway, whether it's an illusion or not, is how you deal with it, your attitude. Um, so yeah, I deal with things poorly all the time, but I'm trying to make my record better and better so that, I mean, stress, I don't know. I'm, I'm interested in health. Yeah. And uh I think I don't need to get into the details of all sorts of stuff that I personally am not into, but a lot of people are. Um, but I think out of all, all the things I might say no to doing, um, stress is probably one of the most harmful things. Maybe second to crack cocaine, but no, I don't know. Um, but yeah, so I try, I try to eliminate stress. I try to learn how to relax. I'm definitely, I've got a long way to go, but I think being happy it's sort of like nervous, like, and I think this applies to table tennis as well. But in acting, I hated doing work. I hated practicing and memorizing my lines. That sucked. It was boring. Mm. Performing is fun. Mm. It's like table tennis. The practice isn't the fun part. Mm. Who wants to drill forehands for 30 minutes or drill blocking or pushing or serving for an hour? That's not fun. Playing games is fun. Playing matches is fun. So that's all I do. Doing snake shots is fun. It is for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of fun. So I do that, right? I do what I find most fun. But when it came time for the performance, I thrived on that thrill of performing. And under pressure, um, some people freeze and some people get nervous. And, and it's, it's sort of like how you handle that nervous energy. You could turn it into excitement or you could let it be fear that sort of holds you back. So for me, I try to think of it in the best light possible so that I can enjoy the moment or make the most of it or perform the best ultimately, because that's what we all, I mean, 
I imagine most people want to perform their best or have their best experiences. So yeah, I just try to do what I can to make that happen. That's a, that's, a, that's a great philosophy and mindset. And you can see you carry that all the time when I see you. So Thanks, working on it. Talking to some other people over the last week, Thomas Viker, some others about table tennis, how it can improve. I mean, not being negative, because I think table tennis is on the rise massively. I think, you know, ITF are doing a great job. All the different things are taking place. So what do you think is going to push the game forward and, and, and make it unreal, to make it a top, top sport? Well, it's interesting for me. I read a lot of the comments from table tennis fans and netizens, you know, YouTube followers and whatnot for the ITTF channel and anything, anything I post, although there's less controversy in my comment section, I think, than the ITTF channel. Um, maybe because people are just, you know, more supportive because I'm a smaller channel. But um, it's getting bigger, though, your channel. Thanks. Good. Yeah. With time, it's, you know, that's something I'm willing to invest some time and effort in, but uh, because I hope it can help bring some entertainment value to the sport and make, right. encourage people say, to play. Dude, you made a video two, three weeks ago and it's viral. 10 million on Facebook somewhere, 8 million somewhere else, 1.7 million on YouTube. I'll keep an eye on this stuff, Adam. It's, Thanks. It's buzzing. We're talk, probably talking a cumulative of 30 million views. That's hitting a lot of people. Thanks. Thanks to you doing the wiggle, wobble, snakes. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the funny thing is I cut out a lot of snakes from that video. I tried to save a few because I have a lot with pros. And then I have a pretty wide spectrum from local club players to college players, coaches, and pros. And uh, yeah, I, I tried to, I was like eight minutes is too long and I cut it down to just under three. But I, I plan to release more and try to deliver it in a different way. I don't like to release the same video more than once. Yeah, yeah. So I'll try to add some little twists, no pun intended, to uh, keep it fresh. But yeah, in terms of what the, the sport could use, um, I, I do think that ITTF has a, a keen eye for this and is focusing on this question very seriously. Um, I talk with a lot of them on the regular and feel that uh, they value my opinion and... I'm thankful for that. And I feel like we're generally on the same page about a lot of stuff. They just don't have time to talk to the haters as much as I do because <laughs> they have to focus on their work. They can't, you know, for me, again, my channel's still small enough that if, I'm not saying people should write mean things, but people ask me questions in respectful ways. Like, yeah. what do you think? Some people might not like the new rubber, you know, rule that's passed about the color. And for me, like, I don't have strong feelings either way, but one feeling I have is, yeah, it'd be really cool to have more self-expression in the sport. I, I'm, are you kidding me? If someone took color away from me? So, yeah. The, the, I wanted to go into that question. Yeah, my, I was a follower I was going to chat about. I mean, because you are very vibrant. I mean, how many colors we got on you here? I don't even count. I think it's a scale. It they is. blend, it's what, fantastic. 256 or I don't know. It's awesome. It's awesome. Thanks. And that's an Android one as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's the new Android. I got oh, it in nice. a box. I got it in a box last night. That's so you. I thought that was one of your like Amazon Amazon Prime jobs. Well, they yeah. Well, I don't even yeah. Half of them are from like Alibaba and AliExpress.com China. But um, yeah, Andrew told me they're like you know we made some shirts that we feel are more in your right up your alley. Fantastic. I should have taken off my credential. Should I do that now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hundred <coughs> percent. We don't need that on. You don't need a credential to get into here, but it's all fine. They asked I'm not going to stop for you. I was asked to, to leave a seat, actually. I was sitting in an area where there were about 100 seats open right in front of the commentator's booth because I just figured I could stay out of people's way, but the commentator's booth is small. And someone came over to me and was like, can I see her? And I was like, sorry, I, I work here. He's like, can I see her? And I showed him. He's like, you can't be here. I'm like, I work there. There are no seats there. And he's like, I'll let you sit for a little bit. And I thought... Adam, and this is something I have to work on, picking my battles. I was like, is it worth getting upset about this or losing any energy arguing? No, he's doing his job. This person, it seems, probably doesn't follow table tennis and simply is told if they don't have the number seven on their badge, this is for number sevens only, so please ask them to leave. So I was like, okay, thank, like, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I forgot what the question... Oh, yeah, my credential was taken off. Colors... Yeah. So that question right there is a question that, I mean, we could have a, a 10 docu-series. I mean, it could go on for hours. Um, every other plane ride I take, I end up writing my thoughts about uh, what would really help table tennis excel. And I think there are a lot of different elements from putting people in the seats. You might think, oh, if we get a larger audience watching, that's important. I agree. It is. But 
if you can get a sold out stadium of people who care about who wins, that creates an atmosphere that transcends the TV. Right. When you're watching, if you're flipping through the channels and you see two people you don't know just ripping a ball back and forth, you're going to be like, wow, that's impressive for a little bit. But if you hear people cheering, or cheering and screaming, making a bunch of noise, you're like, what's happening? What's going yeah. on? I need some context. Why is, I mean, it happens to me all the time. When you're, yeah, 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 you're yeah. here commentating on table one and then on table two, yeah. there's an uproar in the stadium because a Hungarian player is playing and there was a, a service call or a comeback or whatever it is. It's tough to ignore. Dude, you're so right. You know, you know what? You've nailed it, actually. I know, I know we all know that the stadium needs to try and be full, but actually, from a psychological point of view, so today there was a match going on in the corner, and there was tons of people. I was like, what the hell is going on here? I ran down. I thought I had to catch this. Elisa Samara versus Wang Man Yu. And uh, I was so into it. This was awesome. It was only 2 all. Oh, was it 2 or 2 1? So it was early stages. It wasn't even in the seventh set, but there were fans from either corner just going crazy. And I was, right. there, I was there all the way to the end. People Loving have to it. care. There has to be emotional investment. To yeah. make people care, we need to make players human. The fact that, I mean, you know, as a white person myself, um, I, I can say that there are a lot of other white people, and whether it's in Europe or other parts of the world, that are like, whoa, I was so surprised that the Chinese team has a sense of humor. It's like, really? <laughs> like, they're people. Like, why wouldn't they? Yeah, yeah. And it's just, maybe it's expressed a little differently because in certain cultures you don't make as much noise or you show more respect to your, your country or your team or maybe something is seen as disrespectful that's not in, in the Western world. Yeah, yeah. Um, but whenever someone says it's a China-China final, I know what they mean. But if they lose interest because of that, yes, I understand that if you see two different flags on the screen, suddenly you watch with a different level of curiosity and care for who wins, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? Um, when I watch Ma Long and Fan Zhendong play, I like them both. And I'm more interested because it, it will be spectacular. But imagine if I really disliked one and loved another. I mean, it really only takes one. Yeah. If you really dislike one and you have no feelings about the other, you know who you're rooting for. So I'm not saying we should create enemies, but I'm not saying we shouldn't. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> um, but, but it does matter that you care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So creating personalities, humanizing the athletes, uh, and that comes down to marketing. That comes down to, you know, I try to do my part with Ask a Pro Anything and making fun videos. Um, but, but I think ITTF is trying to do a lot to build the personalities. They've got a new social media director who's taken a lot of... Uh, steps to liven up the social media and he's taking some risks and sometimes yeah. people are like that should be taken down mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and sometimes people are like that's hilarious yeah. and he's uh, i think that's how you find where the boundaries are you know you'll never know your limits if you don't test them sometimes you have to cross the line i think maybe fight club have mm -hmm. to break some eggs if you want to make an omelet so anyway and, and it's true like in terms of being exceptional like, nothing great comes from playing it safe. Yeah. Staying alive is important, but sometimes risking that, I mean, free solo. And if you haven't seen the documentary, I highly recommend it. Yes, yeah, so you told me about it yeah, the other day when we were on top of the uh, good old Ferris wheel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you told me about it. Yeah, yeah, that was nice. Yeah, I need to watch it. It sounds awesome. And going back to <laughs> taking risks, Simon Gauzy's took out Shushing. You know, there was a lot of high-state games going on there. Big shots. Went for it. Yeah, I watched pretty much the whole match, and I think anytime you want to pull off an upset, you have to take a risk. Yeah. Uh, and I say this all the time in commentary, but as the underdog, if you play your stable average game, you are consistently going to be worse than the player that is better than you. Mm. So you have to take a chance and say, I'm going to try to play outside of my comfort zone, play above my level, and hope that I can keep it up for long enough to beat this person. And obviously there are details and tweaking in there, but that's the general idea. I mean, that's it, just playing your mediocre game is a... You can't, that's actually a really good point. Really good point. So, yeah, yeah I mean, there, there are so many things table tennis needs, but I do believe that they're investing in growing um, the, not only the brand of table tennis, but the team to help grow the sport. Yeah. Um, while some people, you can never please everybody. You know, the, the new world championships format, they released a video explaining why, and it makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. But if you're a small country that is unlikely to qualify for the world championships and will probably get knocked out of the continental phase, at a personal level, you're going to be disappointed because maybe the government won't give you more funding 
for your growth of table tennis in your small country because you can't go to the world championships. Yeah. Um, at the same time, it's very tough to sell a world championships when only 8% of the matches are actually being purchased or viewed by paying spectators. Yeah, yeah. So I think there's a lot to consider. I think I'm a big fan of the engineer mindset. Um, I find it very attractive in the sense that you're basically always looking for a solution. Sometimes and often it's important to look at as many sides of the story as you can because sometimes something sucks for you personally or us personally, but in the long run, it's really important for the growth of the sport, which will ultimately come back to benefit you. Mm -hmm. You know, it's sort of like the China question. I mean, if, if China dominates the game as, as much as they have for the next decade, uh, imagine if that was the end of the sport. What if the Olympics were like, yeah, it's just no one's tuning in because people don't want to see a China-China final. Yeah. Um, that could be a real threat. Now, it's tough to ask someone to say, hey, like, can you slow down a little bit? Could you take number two? And no one's asking China to be number two. But if they can assist in training others to come to their level, whether that means techniques or sharing resources or opening the doors to have people train, that might make closer competition. And you can understand from China's standpoint, do we want to raise everyone else's level and lose gold medals? Yeah. Well, in the long run, it might actually be the best thing for China as well. So true, isn't it? Yeah, so there, there's a lot. I mean, there's a lot that can be done, and I think there's a lot that is being done, and it's just it's not going to be overnight, and the question is what's top priority and where to focus. So, yeah, ITTF is really good at not listening to all the negative comments. When something is constructive, I think if it's helpful, they go, cool, that makes sense, good idea. And otherwise, it's like, sorry, we're working right now on the yeah. things that uh, you need us to. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Longer conversation, but in short, yeah, helping people care, helping people know the players, create stars and personalities, and uh, making it attractive to look at, from lighting to presentation to the players. This might sound like a funny thing to say, and I know a lot of time women don't get um, as much respect for their athletic abilities because they're judged on their looks more than men. But on both sides, men and women should look attractive when they play because it'll help the sport. It's not a woman thing. It's not, you know, I mean, Ma Long's hairdo and Sujo, hmm. he looked like a superstar. He looked great. I mean, he looked like he just stepped off of a photo shoot and he won. Yeah. Right? Now, this can, th this doesn't take away from your ability. It's not like Ma Long took two years of beauty school to do his hair that day. He trained full time and he put a little gel in his hair or something. He, you know, he I took a shower. You styled it for him. <laughs> Thank you. I considered it. No, but I mean, and some players understand this, right? Bernie Such yeah. is a great example of this. Yeah. She puts time and effort into her presentation, not at the expense of her playing. Europe top 16 champion the year before. Um, just say, like, just really improving steadily. And she's also presenting herself in a way that she's interesting to watch. And women can look and be like, that girl's got a lot of flavor. Mm. And men can look and be like, whoa, who's that? Mm. Damn, she's good too, <laughs> right? <laughs> Sometimes it's just a question of what brings people in the door. And once they're there, they're like, wow, this person's really talented. Mm -hmm. In the end, if they're in the stadium, it doesn't matter what brought them in. I mean, it might a little bit, but it's better to have people in the stadium to at least get exposed to become a fan of the sport. And I think uh, creating an attractive visual from the players to the arena to the lighting to the sound quality. I mean, everything should be should be a pleasure to consume. For sure, for sure. Where where do you see yourself in five years, and Adam? I'm an ideas guy. I'm a I'm a creative person, which is part of the reason I don't love work um, or practice. Right? It's why I love playing. I just love playing table tennis so much that I get kicked out of practice halls are warned about where I'm You've already playing. been warned here. <laughs> I'm constantly being told you're not supposed to be here. I'm like, but, but there are open tables. <laughs> Please, Let there's, me... there's like 30 tables there. Yeah, they're, they're so sad. Look at them. They're lonely. I could be playing on them right now. Um, yeah, I, well, commentating is my main uh, source of income right now and my, you know, the, the most consistent work I have and something that I tend to really enjoy because it affords me to watch a lot of table tennis and never feel guilty about it. And uh, to, to ultimately, hopefully, help grow the sport and make it something that, you know, non-players and players alike can enjoy. Um, why did I bring that up? Oh, yeah, currently I'm, you know, I'm working on and have been working on developing a table tennis travel show. Right. Um, 
something that I hope will be a great way to get table tennis in front of a lot of people, but also like I love table tennis and you know that um, I don't think there's much question about it, but I also think in many senses uh, there are more important things in life and there are a lot of great ways to impact the world, right? One day uh, I'll be dead, hopefully not very soon, but I hope that the time that I spent here on earth I've left something that other people can enjoy or that will improve their quality of life. Um, and I hope that for all of us, I think the more people that can have that, uh, that can accomplish that, the world will be a better place. And I know you give a lot and leave no matter what happens. Uh, you've already done so much for people to enjoy the sport and to service people. Um, so yeah, I think that if I can encourage people to be unafraid, to be kind, to be empowered and, I mean, some other positive adjective. <laughs> like, I want to inspire people. And I think table tennis is one of many of my passions. It just happens to be the passion that is either the most unique or um, suits me for having a job. Um, and if it wasn't my job, I would still be playing. My ex-girlfriend used to tell me, you need to stop playing so much ping pong and start focusing on, on your career. And I was like, no, <laughs> sorry, no. Well, you're gonna sweat, then. Well, but it was just, um, yeah, so that worked out pretty well, I guess. Uh, well, that's it, like you're saying, go follow your passions, but to, follow you know, what you really enjoy doing. Yeah, and in terms of five years from now, we'll see. I hope to have, uh, I hope that, I think table tennis should be presented like a TV show. And I don't mean that the tournament shouldn't be ultimate competition in the sense that the player should have to do anything, you know, it should just be straight up the best player wins and fair competition. But, you know, I was with Tiago Apollonia at the China Open, I think 2016, and I said something to him. I was like, hey, Tiago, can you do me a favor and throw your towel into the crowd? He's like, yeah. And I took video of it and the crowd went crazy. I remember seeing that. It was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And yeah. He, Tiago Apollonia is a very good looking guy. He's not world number one, hasn't won any titles on the level of Ma Long, Ding Ning, or Zhang Jiko, or, you know. But that little effort of throwing a towel that he doesn't need, it might have been the hotel's towel, who knows? I mean, it's easy to replace, but it is well worth in the long run, whatever it costs, to throw it into the crowd. Little things like this, just being mindful of that, and whether that means coaching players or having you know, assistance for the athletes to, to be public figures, um, I think our sport can use more of that. Uh, uh, so, okay, so, so yeah, like you, you said to Apollonia, hey, throw your talent to the crowd. So, so maybe players could be guided some, with some stuff. That's what I'm saying. Like, you know, hey, hey, uh, hey, my lo you know, like when Zhang Jika won uh, one of the events, he ran over, you know, he, he jumped onto the podium, kissed the podium. It, it was amazing to watch. Right. Celebrations, uh, you know, when Ma Long, uh, I misunderstood what it was when he what went was like it? this. Do you know what it meant? Um, I, I've read some comments and I think two of them seem most reasonable to me. One is either racket smoking hot, yeah. cooling it off, or maybe shaking off the rust, wiping yeah. off the rust, yeah. but like the racket's back out, you know, wiping the dust mm -hmm. off it. It's yeah. been in the garage. Um, garage, you guys say that? All right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it was something to that effect. Yeah. I'm yeah. back and I still got it. Um, but the with Thanos snap thing I missed out on because I don't keep up as much as Ma Long does. But yeah, in terms of five years from now, I can't say um, because I don't know what's most important. I really don't. I, I think for me, happiness right now is very high on the list. I think being of service is important, but I think you have to take care of yourself too. Because if all you do is live for other people, maybe that's enough and you'll be really fulfilled all the time. Maybe. But some people take it to an extreme where they risk their own health and then they can't actually be as strong in terms of being for the people. So I don't know. Uh, I imagine table tennis in five years will be a big part of my life still. Um, I hope entertainment will. Um, I think the things that it's like this, the things that I'm best at doing, um, maybe are not editing, right? My editing's okay, but there are tons of people who can edit. 
Um, maybe if it's people skills or making people laugh or smile or doing something unusual, I should spend more time doing whatever is the least replaceable. Anything that anyone else could be doing, everyone else should be doing because I could be more useful somewhere else. Mm. So if I have an idea that's a good idea, but I don't have time to make it happen because I have to go sit for hours and edit, well, I should have an editor or I should, so I should try to make that happen so that sure. I can be my own Tony Stark, that I can be the highest functioning human that I can be, which means eliminating everything from my life that I don't have to be doing that would be more cost effective and efficient to have someone else doing for me so that I can produce something that's very either useful, powerful, helpful. So I have a lot of ideas and uh, five years from now, let's see, it'd be great to have some TV shows out there. It'd be great to be commentating, to be playing, to inspiring, to be inspiring people. I don't know. Um, and still have time for family, friends and not being stressed, basically. Absolutely. So I'm pretty open-minded. Five years from now, I have no idea. I don't know what country I'll be living in. I don't know. I don't know, but I'm open. As long as I'm enjoying it, I'm, I'm in for the ride. Superb, superb, superb. Well, I'm thinking about the comments, comment section. We've gone across that. People ask about the uh, quality of the YouTube videos. I don't know how much I have to say about yeah, that. Yeah, everyone keeps going about that. I don't even, yeah. I mean, in short, I understand why people say what they say. Um, and I don't know the exact reasons. I think I've heard some of the reasons mm -hmm. or maybe most of the reasons that the live stream or the highlight videos are not the same quality as, say, the TV production for the main court. Um, and I think in 2021, there, I don't know if there will be, but there definitely could be some really major changes that are really good changes for table tennis. Yes, it's, it's, yeah, that's what I keep hearing as well. I, um, Thomas Vikert said that in the, in the podcast. So it seems like there's going to be a shift in rights and stuff and... It's like Harimoto getting his driver's license. <laughs> Suddenly he's free to, to roam the cabin. Exactly. You know, uh, for ITTF, it's when you get in certain contracts and you share responsibility, you, there are certain things you can't do because the product isn't fully yours. Mm -hmm. um, when 2021 comes around, ITTF will have the rights yes. to the product, meaning table tennis and the videos that you see. So they can do a lot with it. They have a lot more freedom and control, but right now they're sharing responsibility for the live stream with a live streaming company and a third yeah. party. And so it's like, oh, we'd like to have higher quality videos um, for this. And they say, oh, well, we're not gonna pay for the bandwidth. So mm -hmm. if you wanna do that, you're free to pay for it. And they're like, but you're profiting from it as well. We should go in on this together because we're both in it. It's, it's half yours, half ours. And they're like, sorry, we don't believe it's worth it. So if you do, you cover our half and you can do what you want. And they're like, well, that seems weird because, you know. And yeah. So I understand that struggle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, that's part of it, if not most of it, to my understanding. Wow. Uh, yeah, that, that, that makes sense. So after the sign-shaking experience, uh, I worked in restaurants on and off as a waiter for my acting because you never know when you're going to get a job as an actor. And when you do, it's great. And you can always take time away from the restaurant, but restaurants tend to be flexible and you're meeting a lot of people, so that was good. Um, I worked in Japanese food a lot, actually, which helped me uh, retain a little bit of Japanese. Ex-girlfriend taught me some, which was cool. Nice. Um, let's see, other job. I worked in a, at a kid's cartoon network creating funny videos for a while after the first minorly, no, it was minor, <laughs> there's no quotes, minorly viral video Someone I emailed it to was like, hey, you want a job working for me? I said, well, tell me more. And it led to a job at a kid's company until uh, we realized it wasn't a good fit. Okay. And that was fair enough. Um, coaching table tennis for a while was the best way for me to make money and enjoy doing what I do. Uh, MCing. Oh, I, well, acting in voiceover. I, I mean... Can, I, can, can you show me some stuff? We've got a mic here. What do you want? Ooh, anything. Well, for which part? Which, what were you referring to? When you say stuff, mm. what type of stuff? You Voiceover be or beatboxing? Beatbox, yeah, I can do a little bit. I don't know how it'll sound. Let's see. That's coming through great. Oh, you know what I like to do? Uh, Billy Jean. <clears throat> okay. Mm. 
Okay. <clears throat> this is great. That is amazing. <laughs> Thanks. It sounds exactly the same. The mic is good here. Yeah, this is great. He's enjoying himself. <laughs> Every time you talk, I just beatbox. No, go ahead. I actually know one beatbox I saw of our video on YouTube recently. Uh, you know what I'm going to say, don't you? No, I Ro don't. Ross, Ross Oh, Ross Well, Ross he, was, he was the godfather of beatbox. Okay, he like, could sing at the same time. You want to hear me do a terrible version of oh, his please. greatest? <laughs> Here's me ruining Ross If Your Mother Only Knew. Oh, this is amazing. <laughs> it's not, it is when he does it. When I do it, it's not. Here we go. If your mother only knew, knew. If your mother only knew, knew. Yeah? Dude, that's ridiculous. Well, when he does it, it is. When I do it, it's like, oh, now I see how it's done. I think I can do that too. I, I'm the in-between guy who makes it clear how the trick is done. And then you're like, I'm going to practice and do it better than Adam. Uh. That's what I was exposed to. A kid in high school did that. And I was like, now I get it. Thanks. I'm going to go in the bathroom and practice every time I have nothing better. This is before cell phones. Yeah. I just dated myself. But, which I've been doing for a long time. What's up? <laughs> no. Um, but yeah, so I just wanted to do what that kid did. Same with the moonwalk, actually. Yeah. I met a guy who could do the moonwalk, and I was like, don't leave me. One more time. Show me again. Show me again. One more, just one more time. Just, and then I went home and practiced all night. And then I got to a point where I was like, wait, shoot, I forgot. And I went back to the kid the next day at school. It was like, the moonwalk. One more time. One more time. One more time. What? Okay, thanks. And then I practiced all night and I never had to ask him again. Wow. But it's still, I mean, I could do better now. There's plenty of room for improvement. But I had enough where I didn't need that person. I didn't need to bother that person anymore to understand how it's done. Anyway, so beatboxing awesome. is... awesome. Thanks. Yeah, these mics are good. I mean, these mics make, you know, when I do that, like, stairwells can be good. But if I do that without a microphone, it, you're, I don't know, not so impressive. It was great. Thanks, I mean man. It's going to have to definitely go on Instagram, isn't it? That? As you wish. Yeah, I'm open. I, I trust you. You're the at, expert with social media. At Adam Bobbo. Follow him. Fantastic. Thanks. That'd be great. Uh, That's cool. Oh. You know, you're right. There was no YouTube back in the day, right? You know, so you couldn't like get step-by-step -step guides. The kids nowadays, oh no, this is broken. Go to YouTube. Fixed. Right. Well, yeah, me too. I use it for the... I, I want to know, like, when is a sweet potato bad? <laughs> like, <laughs> now I know. Not to eat poison. Um... Beatboxing, so let's see. Yeah, so Rozell was the person, you know, yeah, he, was so he was part of the roots. I'm not saying then that he is a innovator. Fake. Well, no, no, oh, no, no, my bad. No, sorry. no, yeah, but you know what I mean? Because, he, like, I thought when, when I was watching, I thought, oh my god, he must have some like god given throat oh. to be able to like no. do two sounds at the same time, or see, but he's just got as a technique to doing it. Malone's a human being. No, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's here. They, they just work hard at their craft. Yeah, I mean, okay. I, I just spent... I'm not, I'm not saying you're not talented at beatboxing. No, I got you. But what I heard from there was like... It's possible. It and was... you know I don't have gadgets with me other than this microphone yeah, in my throat. Exactly. Yeah, it's or like... mouth. Mm. Or both. But it yeah. Was, it was great. Thanks, man. Yeah, it's cool. Um, yeah. I mean, now on YouTube, you can just type in beatbox and look for things that have more than a million views. And they're... You know, there are 15 people that do tricks that Rozelle never did. Right. Although Rozelle came out like eight years after If Your Mother Only Knew and did something where he did like five things at the same time. He's like, I've got to really take this to the next level with yeah. all these YouTubers. And it's nuts. Okay, um, so Rozelle's good. still incredible. But there are people, street performers, there are beatboxers that like, I'm a, I'm a, a drooling baby in terms of beatboxing. I'm a very amateur. I'm enough to impress people that don't beatbox yeah. or aren't exposed to it. But in the beatboxing world, BoxCon and stuff like that, I wouldn't dare get on stage. Right. I'm enough to help someone who has a freestyle, but I'm not, I'm not close to competitive. I'm just very the basics, the tip of the... It's like table tennis. You, you have friends that are the best player they've ever met. They don't know anybody who can beat them. And then they show up at a club and they've got some 80-year-old woman with a back brace and dimples who had to fold up her walker to play you who just destroys them because they know spin. Yeah, That's like, yeah, I'm yeah. that dude that shows up at the table tennis club like... But, but I know better because I know the, how broad the spectrum is. So I know that I'm very, very amateur. Yeah, 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 yeah. Did you ever see uh, Lord of the Rings? Yep. 
Okay, don't, it's a long time ago, though, so I may not be able to recall. But go on. You know uh, Smeagol? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gollum? Okay, we've got an impression of this, have we? Okay, you can shut your eyes for this if you want. Uh, is it really that good? I don't know. It might help if you shut your eyes, though. Okay, let's try it. Oh, masters, Smeagol doesn't want to have any problems. Smeagol doesn't even have any friends. But you, you stole the ring. You took it from him. I only want the best. I only want my process. Dude, that is insane. Thanks, man. You looked. <laughs> no, I, looked I, looked halfway, I had to look halfway through. I want to see what your face... I get to see on camera later what your face is like during that. Probably just like Gollum. No, it's going to look like <laughs> me 40 years from now. On Dude, the regular. That, that was spitting. Thanks, man. Yeah, I like to, you know, voiceover. I got into voiceover because I did funny voices and I did a movie phone. And people used to call in instead of for... It was one of those things where you call in to hear what time the movie's playing. But I tried to make it super fun and entertaining. So people started to call in just to, like, make their friends laugh. To be like, right. oh, here it is, here it is. Listen to this guy. <laughs> and, it, and it ended up getting on the news. And it okay. led to me getting a, a voiceover demo um, and an agent. Wow. And for 13 years, I was with the same agent doing voiceover. Um, now, interestingly enough, the cartoon world, even though that's what got me into it, doing funny voices, is so difficult to break into mm -hmm. uh, that I did a lot more commercial work. You know, right now, McDonald's for 99 cents, you can get six chicken McNuggets with mouthwatering delicious wood for bread. Or what? I don't know. I hope that gets me McDonald's sponsorship. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't um, yeah, but, but like commercial work is much easier to come by. It's less mm. risky to cast somebody for that. Video games, I did some video games, some Japanese oh. anime. Um, and then I got into stand-up comedy because I like making people laugh, doing impressions, performing. And uh, I thought it would be good for my acting career, which is part of the reason I didn't really continue so long with stand-up comedy. But I had been acting for years. And when I started doing stand-up comedy, people were like, hey, this is my buddy, Adam Bobro. He's a professional stand-up comedian. <laughs> And it's almost like, I mean, I'm, I'm doing comedy sometimes, but I don't know if I'd yeah. call myself a professional. Occasionally, I'd get paid for it. So where do you draw the line, really? That's awesome, man. You, you had a, you've had a, a wild career, and I think it all, everything you've done is stemmed around that sort of area of like showmanship, personality. It's awesome. Thanks. Well, I think everything's better uh, with some entertainment factor. I mean... Yeah, I don't know if you've seen Life is Beautiful. No. Sounds great. Really? Sounds great. I want to say Best Picture of 96. Could be wrong, but yeah, I think so. Um, it's a great movie, and I don't know what category you put it into because it's, I wouldn't call it a comedy about the Holocaust, um, but sort of. Mm -hmm. And that's interesting, right? Mm -hmm. I yeah, mean, yeah, that's yeah. not a topic for comedy so often. Uh, for a decent reason, you know, genocide isn't hilarious. Um, but there, it was laced with a heartwarming, like, human side and, and humanizing people and okay. caring, connecting. I mean, that's like what I was talking about before. I think if it, whatever your least favorite subject in school was, if it's history, if you have a good teacher, a good teacher can make anything interesting. That's true. So presentation, marketing, these things matter. Um, and so I try to pay attention to that as well and hope that I can be as effective as possible, I guess. And there's always room for improvement, so I'm hoping to continue learning and planning to continue learning and improving. Fantastic. All right, Adam, I know you've got to do some commentating now. You've got a few games this evening, haven't you? Yeah, I'm excited. Awesome. So um, who's going to win the women's and men's end? And then we'll, we'll call it there. Get your predictions. Psh. If you get them both right, I'll get, the, the, uh, get you um, a beer on a Saturday night. I don't Sunday drink night. beer. You I didn't know. make that very appealing. I know. What, what ice cream? Be? Ice cream? Yeah, I get an ice cream Sunday. The next uh, Budapest Eye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, if I get it right, wow. So my reasoning is Wang Man Yu has beaten Ding Ning quite a bit recently. Yeah. Yet she's on her debut performance on the biggest stage. And I think nerves, pressure, and being young tend to not all meld so well. This is something that takes time and experience. I think Ding Ning has that. Um, while Ding Ning could definitely get knocked out and it's still anybody's title to be taken, if I have to choose one for a chance at some ice cream and another, uh, what uh, do you call it, the Ferris Budapest, wheel? The Budapest, Budapest Eye, I think it's called. Yeah, right. Fantastic. So I'm going to go Ding Ning, and on the men's side, I'm going to go Ma Long. Ma Long, yeah. 
I mean, it's really for me, if I had to choose one, it, it's Fan Zhendong or Ma Long, but that's, that's an easy, anybody would favor those two. Um, a lot of people are saying Fan Zhendong right now. I know. Yeah, yeah, even uh, some of his teammates. Yeah, really? But they quickly back it up with, but, but maybe Ma Long. But maybe like, but but really, it's like so maybe fifty one forty nine Fan Zhendong. It's tough to say, but so what? Who, what teammates? You said maybe his teammates. Yu Ziyang. When I said who do you think is going to win, he said Fan Zhendong, and then he said, but he didn't say it so quickly, and he was like, but it could be Ma Long. <laughs> like he really wanted to backpedal, and that's how I feel. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's tough. There's no question; those two are the favorites. Yeah. Um, but who knows? Simon Gozi just beat Shushin. It only takes one really strong performance to win four games, and one of those players is knocked out, potentially both, which seems unlikely. But either way, if they both do what, they, what is expected, uh, only one will move on to the final. Okay, if Harimoto gets to the final, do you think he is in a good shot to win it? Okay, you're talking about, you're talking about experience and stuff. He, I mean, I, I feel if Harimoto's in the final, because of the way he is... I think the other player's going to be seriously nervous. And yeah. I, I think, I don't know, I would, I'd be confident he'd, he'd win it. You'd and be confident yeah. that Harry Moto would win it? Not completely confident, but I feel, like, I, I feel like if Harry Moto gets that final, because of the way he is, he will just go on an absolute mad one. And I think he'll take it. I'll put my money on him. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't put it past him. Um, I might still favor the other side. Um, I would say Harry Moto in the final depending on who it is, maybe I'd give him 40%. 40%. I mean, it's a, for me, it's a realistic shot, but I would favor the other side. Not because I don't like Hadimoto, obviously, I'm a big fan, but um, simply because I think that, one, China as a nation cares a lot about this title. There's going to be so many fans cheering, yeah. And they care, but, but fans aside, yeah. just CTTA, the powers that be, everyone, I mean, this is one of two sports that the government is actively involved in, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Chinese Super League is a government thing. Right. That's interesting. Mm. Um, so it's, it's more than, see, if Japan doesn't win, it's disappointing. If China doesn't win, it's shameful by their standards. Is that Think the about word? the difference. That the That's the word I'm using to, to try to put into perspective the difference in pressure. Japan doesn't expect to win. That's it. China does. They, and they are expected to win globally. Yeah. So that means it's, it's more than disappointing it is, if they don't win. So I think between experience, preparation, resources, but, but we can even just focus on experience under pressure. Um, that being said, World Tour Grand Finals and World Championships are two different levels. Mm -hmm. World Tour Grand Finals is very impressive, and Hadimoto showed that he was able to beat Lin Gao Yuan, that yeah. he was the best player that tournament. So uh, I would love to see it. I think it would be an amazing story and might even say, I hope for the upset, because I think it would create more buzz about table tennis and create more excitement. So it has nothing to do with liking one nation more than the other. It's simply me thinking long term about growth of the sport. Yeah, that would, it would do wonders. Yeah. And ultimately, I hope that it's an incredible match no matter what. But I would still favor the, the Chinese players, whether it's Fan Zhendong or Ma Long. Now, if it's somebody else, if it's Liang Jingquin or Lin Gao Yuan, mm. let's see. Then it gets interesting. Then it gets quite maybe closer to 50-50, maybe even favoring Harimoto. Let's yeah. see. So yeah, my, uh, for now, because I already said it and I'm not going to go back, I'm very comfortable with being wrong. I'm used to it. Uh, uh, I'm going to go ding ding and ma long. Nice. All right. Well, I'll hold you to that. <laughs> I'm going to call you a liar if yeah. there is. No, that's, you, can, you can mark me for those. Those are my choices. We'll I'm putting that. it out there. So Awesome. Awesome, Adam. Adam, it's been an absolute pleasure, and thank you for the time. Thank you, Dan. Always a pleasure. Awesome. Awesome. So guys, be sure to follow Adam Bobro on his Instagram and Facebook. Anything else out there? Uh, YouTube, I've got a YouTube channel now. YouTube as well. Type that into YouTube, find it, subscribe. Be sure to like this video as well, subscribe. Let us know in the comments what you thought. And guys, it's been a pleasure. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, Dan. You're awesome. You too.